Are you guys ready for the review of the most anticipated film of 2019? Besides Cats? All right, we're talking about Star Wars Rise of the Skywalker. All right, guys, so I'm not going to say I was extremely hyped for this film. I actually was kind of hyped just because I knew it was about to be hype. Like, it's like, oh, this is going to be an exciting moment for people to talk about movies and all that. But in general, I feel like, you know, the excitement that there was for Star Wars when they started with The Force Awakens just slowly started to fade. Like, all the goodwill and nostalgia that has been there for so many years, it just started, it started to feel like a rude awakening. Like, it was like, all right, now... It's like a little bit too much. <laughs> With The Last Jedi, um, though I didn't think it was like a perfect film, I felt like it was taking chances and it, it had me, you know, a little bit on the edge of my seat. Like, oh, we're, we're doing some new things, you know, there's some new powers to the force that we didn't know before that are just being introduced. Um, I found it interesting. I felt like they took chances. Um, they went to the darker side and, you know, it, it started dealing with these these darker elements that, you know, in Star Wars had been there, but they never really gone deep into it. Um, seeing like Luke and him sort of being jaded by the Force and all this type of things. I liked Last Jedi. I thought it was interesting and I know a lot of people had problems with it. I know there was a lot of fans that didn't like Kylo Ren's war on nostalgia to me, I liked it because I'm kind of like, yeah, forget the past, bro. Like, we're in the future. Let's get it going. Like, let's let's create new things. Let's not just try to live off the old characters and the old stories. So just to let you guys know, there's a lot of spoilers I got to get into because they ain't no use to do this review without talking about the film. So, yeah, it's a huge film. There's a lot of things that happen. So let's get it. First spoiler, everybody in this film dies. But don't worry. They come back about two minutes later. So, yeah try to say what if we kill this character but then it's like no nah, we're not gonna kill this character we're gonna bring him back uh what if, what if it went all the way this way what if ray went totally dark what if she did it <laughs> like is ray a skywalker is ray a palpatine is ray somebody or is ray nobody um i felt like it posed these questions throughout the entire series and it was sort of leading to this big reveal which they ended up discovering jj abrams said that he felt like the character of palpatine needed to come back just for the sake of completing this sort of nine film trilogy or ninthology whatever it is um i understood it i felt like story-wise this was a good decision just in order to you know make the entire scope of it make sense but as far as this three episode trilogy i felt like it was sort of forced um people i think didn't like the fact that ray would be nobody that she wouldn't have any purpose um and they gave her a purpose in this film her purpose is to deal with the dark side one of the elements that they brought into this film was john boyega <laughs> His character, Finn, basically having Force sensitivity to and knowing certain things about Rey that I don't know was really introduced. Um, he said he heard from Leia at one point. That was uh, cool. A, a lot of things in this movie, they move so quickly that sometimes I'll just go to look at my phone or just look away for a second. I'll be like, wait, wh where are we at? Like, I felt like I missed two minutes or something. So yeah, this movie moves really fast. There's a lot of things that happen. This is like three fights between Rey and Kylo Ren. Um, I don't know if we needed that many fights. It felt like repetitive at a certain point. As far as what Star Wars does, I felt like when it first started, there were a lot of cool things about it, like the lightsabers and the force and this connection to uh, space and people and this community of diversity. I think as the years have continued, it's lost its relevancy to the real world. Um, take something like the Joker, for instance. It found its way to be sort of like s social and have like a political message to it that made it feel more than just a movie about a guy that dresses up like a clown. It became something that was really relevant to the conversation we're all having about mental illness and stuff. 
these Star Wars films, I feel like the reason that they lack sort of punch and power is because they're just not relevant. Like, there's nothing about it that is mirroring what's happening in our world, you know? It's it's just so foreign. There's no deeper message to it. I think the biggest fail about this film is the fact that they have this new character of Baby Yoda in the universe and they just decided not to use it. Now, look, I understand this is a different story and it's separate, but it's like... There's not as many characters as charismatic as young baby Yoda in The Mandalorian. I think they need to see what's happening with that and figure out how to adopt that to everything in Star Wars universe. Um, in the film, they do have a couple of children, these weird alien children who have really scary human laughs. They're not as cute as Baby Yoda. They don't work like Baby Yoda. There's a lot of workshopping as far as different alien characters that they try to introduce that just aren't Baby Yoda, man. Sorry, bro. It's not working. But yeah, I I'll say one of the things that really kind of upset me with this film was the level of fan service they went through was basically going against logic. Like, look, I don't want to nerd out about this. And Star Wars, to me... It's at this point, it's not even a nerdy film. It's like an emotional film because none of the <laughs> none of the science of this movie makes any sense. None of the strategy of this movie makes sense. Yeah, I get they're introducing these new elements to the force, but I don't understand the rules. Like Leia can sort of project her essence or can do things, but then she'll die. Like she'll just lose all her energy. I, I'm confused with certain things that the people with the force can do. And it gets to a point where it's like basically their magic. These these Jedi's were like karate masters. They had some skill. They have they had like a sort of intuition skill that allowed them to to harness these powers but at this point it's like magic like you got to be real careful because if you go too far and create characters that can do whatever they want and change the rules and they can time travel or see the future or they could do you know all these crazy elements basically we lose structure to this world and we stop caring about the characters because we know that everything that's really final isn't final or it, it just feels very much like a deus ex machina it's cool to do for the fan service and I don't want to see Chewbacca die in a plane crash but at the end of the day like bro like you got to make choices you got to stick to them like if if you keep saving people resurrecting people and curing them at a certain point it's like all right where when, when does it stop you know my feelings about the character of Rey, look, I've given her three movies for her to grow on me. I'm not saying she's bad. I feel like she's doing a great job with the character. There's something about the character that I still don't care about. Like, she doesn't have that element that makes me root for her or really believe that she's all powerful. It still feels sort of given to her. I don't know why. I can't explain it. It's just literally a feeling like I don't feel for her. Um, the character of Poe, I feel like I don't, un I don't know this guy. Like I don't, I still don't know him. Like I feel like they try to make a Han Solo. They even put him with Chewbacca early on. He doesn't have the grit. He doesn't have the personality. Uh, Oscar Isaac's an amazing actor, but his character is just underserved, and I've never connected with him. Uh, John Boyega, John Boyega, he's an interesting character because of where he comes from, being a stormtrooper. Um, they made some effort in this film in order to sort of develop his character and you could see that maybe they're going with um, the one chick that used to be a stormtrooper that they're, they want to continue that storyline into a series or something. Uh, could be interesting because obviously they hadn't used John Boyega enough that he has the perfect storyline but they fumbled it and I guess they're just gonna reboot it with a new stormtrooper past lady so yeah I don't know. I feel like throughout the series, the strongest character for me was Kylo Ren. I liked his story arc. I like where he came from, his origin. I always felt like he was making very emotional choices. And it led, basically, the arc of this film. He, we never know if he's a good guy or bad guy or where he is. But it really kind of makes sense as far as the, where the entire story ended up going. That he struggled with his faith as far as being on the dark side or the light side. And I feel like he was the hero of this film and of this uh, trilogy. Ray, I don't know, man. I, I, I can't help you with this. The moment with Kylo Ren and Han Solo, I don't know, man. 
he they said he was in his his in his memories or something. I couldn't. It's just too many people coming back from the dead to give messages. Like when they when Luke came back as like a force ghost or whatever, and like it's like when does it stop, bro? Like did did you plan this in advance? Like how how does your energy work where you can choose to come back? Because why not just choose to come back during the battle again? Like how I don't like what is the power? How where does it go? Like when does it stop? Like it's it's just. Yeah, I don't know. It's funny because all the ghosts, when they come back, they have, like, longer hair. I don't know why. Like, they just didn't want to cut it. <laughs> or they just die and it grows. Who knows? Like, it's a very interesting question. There's there's questions we could get into if this is a longer series. But it moves so quick that the second you can have any critical question or any fundamental interesting idea, it's like, all right, on to the next thing. So, yeah. As a whole, I feel like this movie was straight. They did a good enough job for their fans. I don't feel like they're going to win over anybody that isn't already invested in this series like totally because if you know who Palpatine is, if you know who Palpatine is, you basically had to have seen every single movie or at least the original three ones. Uh, not even the original, you have to see the entire thing because you need to know his whole arc. If you don't know, he's just a very scary wizard guy and with like ultimate powers um yeah and like the connection of it basically like there were a couple people that gasped in the theater when they revealed that uh ray is palpatine's granddaughter which it, it the way they said it i just like i i was confused like so what's her relation to everybody i like is she the daughter of palpatine's son because i don't think she's the daughter of um a uh, padme so I don't know like yo when Luke came back as a ghost I basically said Fuck this like I'm done like no more stop bringing people back from the dead stop switching the rules up like we're too late in the game like bro you had eight movies to like lead us up to this and you're just deciding these things since Last Jedi if you hated Last Jedi like, you thought that Last Jedi was, like, a disgrace to Star Wars. Then how do you like anything that's happening in The Rise of Skywalker? Because it's building off of all those things they introduced in The Last Jedi. Like, none of this, like, ghost, like, force ghosts can fight and, and like, resurrect people. From, this wasn't, like, stuff we did in, like, the other Star Wars. This is, like, all new. Like, this all happened in The Last Jedi. If you didn't see The Last Jedi, you'd be lost um, in comparison to, like... Avengers Endgame that found ways to take time with their characters and give them real human moments. This one just kind of moved really quickly throughout the story and continued. Um, the way they did Leia with the CGI, I felt like it was fine. It did good. It wasn't like noticeably different, only for the fact that I know she'd been dead for a minute. And I'm like, is this Tupac? Like, are they Tupacing Carrie Fisher? Just don't do it anymore. Like, it's cool. You did it. You're done. The story done. Don't do it when people are dead. Like, it's weird. Like, already the de-aging thing is one thing, but it's like, when you start doing it for humans after they're dead, I start questioning, like, how much of this are you creating? Like, it's very weird. <laughs> like, like it's interesting. Like, I'm thinking, when did they shoot this and all that? So, yeah. Luke is, like, still, like, a weird, haggity old man in this. It's like, it's like you're dead and, like, you're still, like, sort of critical of people. It's, it's interesting, but, yeah. All right, one of the weirdest moments for me that I just don't understand was the kiss. Like, Ray and uh, Kylo Ren kissing at the end. It's like you feel the tension. Like, you know they should kiss, but you're like, aren't they sort of related? Like, I don't get it. And then you think about Luke and Leia's kiss. So I, I don't know. Like, was that a choice? Was that like a throwback? Was that other fan service? Like, oh, Luke and Leia did it and their brother and sister, Kylo and Rey kind of have this bond. So yeah, just have them kiss. Maybe that's something that people do like in this culture. Like, I was actually interested, like if kissing people that are like your mutual like friend, like if if you have a strong bond with somebody and you just kiss them on the lips, like that's an interesting character trait that like should be canon in Star Wars and should continue. Like there was one scene of two women kissing and people cheered in the theater because they were like, yes, finally, like we're represented. And I was like, maybe that's just something that people do in this universe. So as I'm saying, we need Finn 
and we need Poe to kiss just to show that it's just something we do and we got respect for each other and like you know we got mutual love and we're on the same team just do it bro like why not like it's something we do now all in all i like the ending there was a lot of weird things happening like how did they get the horses in space with john boyega's character i i don't know it's just like yo one thing i will say is that the special effects in this movie were like good like in force awakens i felt like uh the little alien chick that gave her the lightsaber she looked kind of fake in this one she looked a little better and it looked like they went they went for the puppets and the costumes over like the cgi for certain characters i like that uh, I like that suggestion. I like that idea. I like that we're back to that because it's always more authentic and it's more interesting and realistic. Yeah, so that's that. Um, all in all, I'll give this film a 5 out of 10. There's going to be a lot of people that feel like, yo, you're tripping balls right now. 5 out of 10. Like, what? Like, what do you do? <laughs> but, dude, this was an okay movie. There were some thrills. There were a lot of things happening. But all in all, a lot of it just... It's just not, it's not realistic to me. It's not gripping. The story felt very convoluted. It felt like they pulled it out their ass. Like after Last Jedi, um, take chances, kill characters, create new characters, have some grit and have some, you know, ha have some balls and do something with this series and this world that's deeper. I know they wanted to get into like sort of the, the underworld and the black market like they did into The Last Jedi. If you want to do that, just do it. Like go to the casinos and do all these things and have Benicio del Toro doing stuff, but like, do it good. Don't do it like in a corny kids way. Like, do it for real. Mandalorian is making strides to do it. There's certain things I really like about Mandalorian, and there's things that I don't really like. So it is what it is. I'm not gonna get into that in this review, but yeah. Let me know how you felt about the Rise of Skywalker. Did you think that it ended on a good note? Did you feel the same way I felt about a lot of this do sex machina? type introduction of powers and um yeah there were a lot of changes and stuff there were a lot of things that happened and then were undid let me know if you felt the same way if you felt different i'm open to all types of uh, criticism and feedback and like all that let me know how you feel and uh the cats review is coming soon so brace yourself boys and girls because the cats are here <laughs> Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment on this video and check out some of my other reviews. And let me know what else you want me to comment on and all that. And uh, yeah, it's your world. I'm just living in it, bruh. And uh, yeah, let me know how you think about this new setup. It's a green screen. We're killing it. So yeah, that's new. Like, you know, moving up. 2020, a big year. You know, I'm, I probably won't be as consistent as usual. But if you message me and you hit me up and you let me know you want something, Got you, bro.